your viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's an O2 Escape. It's got the big 3.0 in it. Uh, money lights on. Apparently the guy's trying to get it past inspection. He's had it at a couple shops. They referred him here. Uh, they couldn't figure out what was going on with it. Evidently it's something with the EGR valve. I've uh, got the key on over there. Got the computer ID in so we can see what code's in it and see if we can't help this fellow out. So we got that ID in and I pulled the codes. And we have a 1409, so uh, with the electronic vacuum regulator control circuit. Uh, so that must have to do with the EGR valve. We also have a P1000. And he said he drove it like 700 miles, uh, evidently, to get the light to come back on, is what I'm told. I'm surprised the entire drive cycle is not done. We're going to have to go back out because I want to see what's not done. So we're going to read the monitors out because this is important to know, as, you know, particularly when you're dealing with the public. You're gonna have to make note of this. Yeah, what do we have? We have catalyst not ready, evap not ready, everything else is. So I'm gonna print that out for our records and you know also for his. I figured I'd get us some data when we were here. Uh, so 1409 uh, EGR vacuum regulator solenoid circuit. So we're dealing with circuit code. Uh, I just wanted to see what the criteria was here. Uh, let's check this. Let's try that again. This test checks the electrical function of the EGR valve regulator solenoid test fails when the EVR circuit voltage is either too high or too low when compared to the expected voltage range. Uh, EGR must be enabled for this to complete. Possible causes, open circuit, short voltage, short to ground. Uh, that must be on the control side. Uh, vehicle power open, so no power getting to it. So we're probably dealing with like a, you know, a two-wire solenoid here. Let's get back to wherever we got to get to. So what we'll do is we'll just look up a wire diagram, see if we can't find it, and come up with some kind of test. I assume it's a, you know, full-time power ground side switched solenoid of sorts. So we'll let this load up, and we're going to be under engine controls, I imagine. There's usually several of these diagrams, so we're probably going to have to poke to find the EGR. So I found the DPFE sensor, so without even popping a hood on this, it's uh, probably you know a very classic Ford system where they use an EGR valve and then this DPFE sensor to check EGR valve function. But that's not what we're having a problem with. We've still got to find the control solenoid itself for the EGR. It's always on the last diagram you look on. Isn't that the truth? In this case, I think it's going to be the actual last diagram. Here's diagram number four. There we go. EGR vacuum regulator. I'm assuming this white with pink goes around town. Power. Power, power. That feeds a whole bunch of things. That feeds idle air control valve. What else does it feed? It's got a lot of splices up here. Two different power feeds out of the ECM. Round goes over here, feeds a whole bunch of stuff. So I assume we're not missing power. Or at least, you know, from the general source, which is the PCM power relay comes down because that feeds the computer in two different spots and also provides power to uh, the regulator. So now we know now we know a little something. I wonder if we have a bi-directional control. Uh, it's an automatic gearbox. I don't know. I think it's just four-wheel drive. We'll see if we have any type of test if we're going to need it. Just in case. And let's see other tests. Solenoid tests maybe. Nope, oh, that's transmission stuff. Yeah, EGR duty cycle, there we go. So we can uh, do something with that if we have to. This thing's kind of noisy sitting with key on or some kind of solenoid on or something. And grab us a light here. Our valve should be relatively easy. All right. Looks like they've done the cl 
classic clean the grounds, replace all the parts. I see it's got a new solenoid, uh, of course, new EGR valve, new vacuum line, new DPFE sensor. So they've already shotgunned all the parts at it. Uh, so let's just see. We're going to be dealing with a solenoid back here. This should be. That is the EGR valve solenoid, so we're going to be dealing with just essentially two wires. Should be pretty simple. Famous last words, right? Should be pretty simple. Oops. So with the key on, according to our diagram, we should have full-time power back here. I believe it was the white with pink. Test light works, hook the ground, and we have power. But it looks like that terminal is pretty wonky back in there. Looks like she's had a lot of front probing. All right. Oh. <laughs> Never mind, we just fixed it. The problem is on the control side. And the problem is nobody tugged on the wires at the back of the connector. Let me show you. This is easy. And they were so close with their parts cannon too. I uh, just give a little tug on the back of the harness and the wire broke in the connector. So that wire is still pretty tight, but when I gave a little tug on the purple, so that's gonna be the control side, it broke. Awesome. Well, at least I got them for three or $400 worth of parts first. <laughs> Some days it pays to be lucky. Better be lucky than good. So we put a engine in a, Freestyle or Freestar or something there. And I saved the harness out of it. And it was out in my shed. And I went and did some digging. And this thing was on it, so I chopped it off. And I think I might be lucky in the sense too that it uh, it's even the right colors. Hopefully this one's not junk. I always have a tendency to save harnesses. Sometimes I forget where they are and end up throwing them away. But I got a bunch of them out in my shed outside. Because a lot of times we get these engines from junkyards in there. They'll come with all kinds of stuff on them. Coil packs and whatnot. And you just keep it all. You never know. It's a good thing I don't have a big storage facility. Because eventually, you know, years and years later, I just... This little car, I go on a rampage, it's called. And I just start throwing stuff away. Because the walls start moving in on me. There we go. That's all we needed. This will be a quick, easy fix, assuming our connector is good. Pins look good on that side. good on this side. I'm going to get that installed, peel back that harness a little bit, reduce what we have there, get this one hooked up, and we should be done. Mission accomplished. I'm going to turn the key back on. All right, the key is on. Oh, I got a sneeze coming. I can feel it. Damn! Woo! test light. I'm going to use our scan tool here. Can you guys see? Hopefully. Turn this on. Uh, let's see. Preconditions not met or test not supported on this system. <laughs> Alright, well that answers that. Uh, let's see if there's any other EGR tests on here. So I switched tools for grins and giggles. And it says here that this test function is not supported by this module. So what can we do? We could just simply take it for a drive, assuming the DPFE sensor works, which we can just check real quick before we go for a ride. So that's going to measure differential pressure in the exhaust when the um, EGR valve opens. So let's just find that. We'll manually open it, make sure that works, and we'll just drive down the road. And let's see here. There's our DPFE. I don't know as if we have any 
EGR solenoid, I doubt. No, we don't. So we're just going to be able to see our DPFE, which is around 1.1 volt key on engine off. So I'm going to pull that up into the graph here. I'll put it in the big thick one so everybody can see it. So there we are, we're, you know, key on engine off 1.1 volt. So I'm going to take and start it and uh, we can just use a T-pin. We'll go right back into the control side here. And we should be able to touch that with our test light and make the ER valve open. Assuming all the aftermarket stuff they put on there works. I'm going to back probe the purple wire. That's the control wire. It should make our solenoid click when we touch it with our test light now. Chances are it's just going to make the engine stall or run really, really rough. So I'm hooked to ground. I don't hear the solenoid clicking. That should be enough to pull it to ground. Let me go ahead and start it. see where it opened the EGR valve there. Uh, let me set you guys up. Enhance. Enhance. That's probably good enough. I'll reach around here. Like I say, test light hook the ground. We're going to touch the control wire. That'll open the valve. And you can see on the scan data, our DPFB sensor is around, around 3 volts. And back to 1.1. So technically, when we drive down the road, unenhance, unenhance, we should see, you know, a steady cruise, EGR valve opening, and that's going to tell us that everything is good. It's going to tell us that at least ECM has control of that solenoid now, uh, although we may have just set some circuit codes from Fennelin. So I'm going to go back. We're going to clear the codes out of it. Oops, 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 oops. And then we're gonna go for a wreck. And please admire the classic move. The dirty snow shoved in the corner of the windshield to hide the no inspection. <laughs> classic move. What's up, Mrs. O? Oh, not much. Need too much paperwork. What's up, Sheba? doing her thing you're doing your thing mm -hmm. would you uh be so kind as to be our door opener i guess so all right come on let's see your magic cape i didn't tell everybody oh about God. your magic cape seriously what all day you're gonna harass me do do a magic trick for us with your cape um hmm. do they call it a cape or what do they call it wait that's what you call it oh it's called a shirt that right, shirt goes down to your knees. It's still a shirt. All right, let's roll. Do a superhero thing like a cape. There you go. You're like a superhero. <laughs> Hold on, folks. It's jammed up here. It's right away. It's always jammed up. Ah, screw it. We're skipping the seatbelt. It's jammed up. Let's see. I'm going to pop in some data here. I did clear the codes. I'll get you guys readjusted. And we'll see what's going on. Alright, here we go. This is where that little screen recorder bit I was messing with would be handy. Go this way. Holy crap, biscuit! Seen that coming a mile away. What is hold on to that? Oh my gosh, everything is falling down. Hold on, folks. Uh gotcha. It seemed like I had some kind of method by now, but I don't. 
Oh, she's moaning and groaning on us. All right, we can tell right away our EGR valve is working. Because it just opened a little. I know you guys can't see it. Maybe I can move you around here. And maybe not. Let's see, we'll uh, get up to cruising speed. The old garbage man. Oh, I think this thing's gonna need some more stuff for inspection than just the old engine light fixed, but. Now, is that fancy or what? All right, we're gonna attempt to take off without dropping everything on the floor. We should see an EGR event, which we are. Remember, as the EGR opens, the voltage goes up on the differential sensor there. And it is, and why is that important? Well, that's important because if we didn't fix the control side of the EGR valve, we wouldn't be seeing any change there, right? You know, if the computer didn't have the ability to open it, be done like so when we let off the throttle the EGR valve should close so I just let off the throttle and we went right back to our base voltage but when we come back to a steady cruise our EGR valve is going to open however much the ECM commands it of course it's going to have different strategies depending on engine load and whatnot There we are, 100% confirmed fix. Uh, this is what we would have to do uh, because we could not do a circuit test, you know, a bi-directional test with the scan tool. All we can do is look to, you know, make sure that it's working the best we can. So the next step, I guess, would be uh, run a drive cycle with it. Uh, this guy wanted his car back ASAP. So I'm just gonna give it back to him. Uh, in order to do a drive cycle on this, I'd have to let it sit and get cold and, and all that stuff so we're just going to give it back we know this code's fixed we also know that the drive cycle was not finished so he potentially could have evap problems and uh you know whatever other monitor wasn't set now that that'll run so i'll make him aware of that which he sounded like he was pretty pretty well versed in that from being at the other shops you know because every time they put parts on it i guess he was told to drive it uh, for whatever reason a, a given amount of mileage because that seems to be the thing that the other shops say is, you know, oh, you have to put, you know, 700 miles on it, 800 miles, 200 miles, whatever the mileage is that their magic number is. That's what they tell customers. And in my experience, I have found that when I tell the customer, drive it X amount of miles, which I, which I don't do, but I find that customers that are told that, oh, hang on, folks. I find that when they're told that, is that's all they do they they go out driving with intention and just you know keep driving and driving and driving and driving and they never meet the the criteria so to speak you know the car doesn't sit because they just keep putting gas in it and keep driving and you know it doesn't run the drive cycle because it hasn't had the proper number of you know cold soaks and warm-ups so i usually just ask my customer where do you you know where do you live and where do you go to work and you know if it's a, you know a 20 minute commute every day i tell them drive it to work three times come back and see me i'll see where it's at 90 percent of the time the drive cycle is done at that point i don't give them specific instructions other than if i know there's teenage drivers in the house or that you know the guy's kind of a lead foot i just tell them not to be hot dogging it you know don't be you know full throttle don't be passing people uh you know don't fill the tank full every single day if that's your habit just you know Leave the gas gauge, you know, gas tank where it's at. Usually it's between quarter and three quarters, you're good. And if you're not driving like a wacko, you're good. So I don't uh, invest a whole lot into it. So back of the shop, what did we do? We went on about a five mile test drive, maybe. And the only monitors that did not set on that test drive are the Catalyst and EVAP. Uh, EGR pass, oxygen sensor heater, O2 monitor. Um, course comprehensive fuel misfire so yeah just even that little short jaunt we got what we wanted EGR monitor check that tests okay that ran really quick we're gonna check codes and there's no codes I already looked so we have no pending code so we know the job that we came to do is done it is fixed at least thus far and we'll give it back to them 
so we will leave it at that. Ugh. I'm 90% certain it's going to throw evap codes because it stinks. This car reeks like gas. Um, but some other shops aren't too concerned about their inspections or getting them through. Uh, it's interesting to me to know uh, the other shops in our area and, and some of the shenanigans that goes on there in the sense of, you know, getting a customer to run a drive cycle and only get just enough so they can put a sticker on it. Like, I don't know, I've never been of that mindset. Why not just fix the car so it can run a full drive cycle without throwing an engine light instead of playing this game for months on end before your inspections do where, you know, okay, we're going to clear the code, you drive it, but, you know, drive it like this and, you know, take my tool, you know, take, take my tool with you. And when this one sets, uh, go fill it up with gas so it won't run this monitor. It just it gets too freaking complicated. Just fix the damn car. You know, that seems easier to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but some of you guys know what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about this. I'm talking about you going down there in that comment box, leaving your comment, question, criticism, or concern. While you're down there, subscribe and ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.